Bradford. All right, so again, starting with skeletal system, types of bones, and yes, it's sutural bones. You have sometimes bones that form along the line of a suture are sutural bones. Your bones that are in flat bones in your skull are flat bones. Bones on your arms and legs, these are long bones. Patella is a sesamoid bone, kind of like sesame seed shape. Bones in your wrist and your ankle are short bones, and your vertebra is a irregular bone, okay? So you'll get a chance to look at bones in the skeletons today and uh, also in these boxes, okay? All right, look at the structure of a bone. If you were to slice it, on the ends of the bone, you have the epiphysis. Either end, you have an epiphysis. In the long shaft of the bone, you have a diaphysis. And separating the diaphysis from the epiphysis, you have the metaphysis, okay? On the outside of the bone, you'll find compact bone. On the inside, find spongy bone, okay? On the shaft, you'll also find sometimes a hollow area, which is the medullary cavity. On your flat bones, you get a thin, two thin layers of compact bone, okay, known as cortex, and you've got sort of a, your meat inside your sandwich, it's your spongy bone, also known as diploid, okay. Here's another representation of that. Here's your spongy bone, your medullary cavity on the inside of the bone, and the outside you have your compact bone. All right, so here are some mature bones. So you have an epiphyseal line separating your epiphysis from your diaphysis. This bone has a layer of articular collars over it. So the outer covering of the compact bones is called periosteum. This bone has blood vessel going in, so it's a nutrient vessel and goes through a hole called a nutrient foramen. Now, some of your tables also have bone models. So you can look at inside of a bone. If you look at the rings of the, of the tree, so to speak, those are osteons, okay? Each ring inside the osteon is a concentric lamella plurals lamellae, okay? And if you were to do cross sections, you can see kind of like the layers of a three layer cake. Those are all the different lamella. And so inside in the middle of the osteon, you have a central canal and it's lined by endosteum, just like your trabecular or your spongy bone. And you can see that lining there, the endosteum. All right, but yes, here again is your spongy bone. So you have, again, you have your central canals that run parallel to the long axis of the bone, perpendicular to the long axis, you have your perforating canals, okay? Here's another view, okay? Most of the same structures, just a different view from a different, um, the previous lab manual that we used to use. Again, cent central canal. Again, each of these little dots in the lamellae are called lacunae. So each one's a lacuna, and, the little, and that's where the osteocytes live, in the bone cells, mature bone cells. And then the little lines going out from each osteocyte, or out, out from each lacuna, are canaliculi and they allow for communication between the, the lacunae. But those are structures that you need to know. Okay, another view here of the endosteum lining the spongy bone. Okay, there are also lamellae inside of these trabeculae. Okay, so we'll take a break here, allow you to Look at the bone models if you have them on your tables also.
Uh, if you've got your lab manuals with you, you can open them up to lab exercise six. You can do some labeling on pages 146 and 148. Okay. Uh, also, I'm going to look around at your tables at the microscopes and see if there's one specific to this section that we want you to look at. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the axial skeleton. Let's see. So, this is a little difficult maybe to see. Let's see if I can, yeah, make this a little larger. Okay, so skeletal system has 206 bones, okay? So that number is probably going to show up. So try to remember that there's 206 bones in the human skeleton. So we separate them out into the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. We'll probably cover appendicular next time. Okay, we're gonna try to, or next week, depending on how far we get, but uh, focus mostly this week on axial skeleton. There's 80 bones in the axial skeleton and it's composed of your skull and the associated bones with your skull, your thoracic cage and your vertebral column. Okay, so in your skull, we can separate it into your cranium and your face. So the cranium is sort of the top part, the face is the bottom part. Okay, eight bones in the cranium, 14 in the face. Associated bones, you have your auditory ossicles, three on each ear or in each ear. So you get a total of six and then the hyoid bone. Coincidentally, it's the only bone that's not connected to any other bone. Okay, it's just connected to other tissue. All right, um, the thoracic cage is 25 bones, 24 ribs, 12 on each side, and then the sternum, okay? Your vertebral column has 26 bones. You have 24 vertebrae, you have sacrum, and you have a coccyx, okay? So you can kind of see that here too. Skull, thoracic cage with the ribs, okay, and the sternum. Vertebral column, sacrum, and coccyx. Okay, that's your axial skeleton. All right, so let's talk about the bones of the skull and the cranium. So we'll start with cranial bones and look a little bit at facial bones. So it's important to learn these because knowing the names of particularly these bones will help you when you're learning the muscles later because a lot of the names are similar based on the region. So the forehead, that's the frontal bone. Okay, more of the top back part of your head is the parietal bone. Bottom back of your head is the occipital bone. The sides of your head, where your ears are, is the temporal bone. Okay, so between your frontal and your temporal bone, you see a bit of the sphenoid bone, but you get a better view when we actually open the skull. Okay, also you have the ethmoid bone up here, sort of forming kind of the bottom part of the orbit of your eye. Now in the facial bones, you got the zygomatic bone, which is basically your cheekbone or, or part of your cheekbone. Okay. Lacrimal bone, okay, kind of where if we had tears where they would fall, because the lacrimal ducts are the tear ducts. The nose, you have the nasal bone. Upper jaw is the maxilla, lower jaw is the mandible. And back here, you can get a, a little bit of a view of the vomer, okay, it's kind of inside of your skull mostly. Okay, those are some of the, the bones in your cranium and face, now keep in mind, you know, a lot of these bones, you have two of each, you know, one on each side. So keep that in mind. So as I said, you have, technically you have two maxillae, two palatine bones, two nasal bones, two inferior nasal conchae, which we'll show you in a minute. 
two zygomatic bones, two lacrimal bones, one vomer, one mandible. Okay. So your lower jaw is considered one bone. Okay, and then you've got one occipital bone, two parietal bones, one frontal bone, two temporal bones, one sphenoid, and one ethmoid. Okay. Now in your associated bones, your auditory ossicles, your incus, malleus, and stapes. Okay, in the ear canal. Again, you have one set on each side for each ear. So three times two is six, and then you have your hyoid bone, gives you seven. Okay, so that's the bones of the skull in just in kind of an overview. So I'm going to stop for a minute because I think that just to give let you kind of look at that. So it's your table, most of your tables, you have a box and you have a skull in the box. So you can open up the box and look at the skulls. And this will correspond in lab activity seven. We're looking at 7B, which starts on page 161. And on pages 168 to 170, you can start labeling some of the structures that you're seeing there. Yes. So while you're looking at those skulls, I also want to mention to you the different sutures. So separating the parietal bone from the frontal bone, you have the coronal suture on the top of the head. Going down the middle, it's hard to see, but going down the middle of the head, separating the two parietal bones is a sagittal suture. It should make sense because sagittal is going, cutting into left and right sides. Frontal is another word for frontal. This would be like having a frontal section. Okay. Separating the parietal and the temporal bone is the squamous suture. Separating the parietal and the occipital bone is the lambdoid suture. Okay. So make sure you also look for those. Thank you. So again, you can see the bones that we just covered along with the uh, sutures, some things that I wanted to add. On the mandible, this, if you think about it, curvature of the jaw forms an angle, and you call that the angle. Here, we call this part of the this kind of hook up here called the coronoid process, C-O-R-O-N-O-I-D process. And then it's kind of more rounded piece here is the head of the mandible. So I wanna make sure you can see those structures as well. Okay, so you're looking at an anterior view of the skull. You get another, some more views, the space in between the eyes. We call that the glabella, G-L-A-B-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Okay, may not be in your, your lab manual, uh, but it's a structure we do want you to know. So you might want to write it. If you have a picture of a skull, you want to write that on it. This area above are the I would say that 
is the light part here where your eyebrow kind of curves. We call that superciliary arch. So like the upper side of the rounding off, we call that superciliary arch. The underside, we call that supraorbital margin. Supra, S-U-P-R-A, O-R-B-I-T-A-L, margin. Okay, so those are structures. They're, they're in the study guide, but just wanted you to be aware of that. Okay, so the line's kind of hard to see, but going into here, you have a perpendicular plate. Okay. Let's see other structures. So this green area in the nose, call that middle nasal concha. These blue ones down here, we call it the inferior nasal concha. Okay. Here you have the nasal septum. It's, it's actually pointing, I have it written here, but this little line, that's your perpendicular plate. And that's part of your ethmoid bone. Down here is your vomer bone. Okay, so in this view, you see a bit of the palatine bone bit of the sphenoid bone, okay, some of the lacrimal right there in red, green, some of the ethmoid. This hole right here is called a mental foramen. You will need to know some of those. Remember the jaw region or chin region is the mental region. So it's a, and it holds one word for whole is foramen. So this is the mental foramen. And you have a nerve, the mental nerve that goes through it and some vessels. Okay, below the orbit of the eye, you have the infraorbital foramen. And above the orbit, a little dot there, a little hole, it's a supraorbital foramen. Okay. Okay, if you're turning the skull upside down on the inferior side, you've got a big view of the occipital bone. Okay, and this big hole there, large hole, so large foramen, foramen magnum. What goes through the foramen magnum? It's so your spinal column, your spinal cord, yes. Okay, it's a little bump here. These are occipital condyles. So it's kind of hard to see, but right here we call this area the superior nuchal line. And this area up here, we call it the inferior nuchal line. Okay. I have another view of that, maybe a little easier to see. This kind of triangle right there, we call that the external occipital protuberance. Yeah, I'm gonna make that a little smaller. I think this got cut off, but this is, should say condyloid fossa. It should be a C right there. Okay, more structures in the, on the underside. If you think about when people watch cooking shows, they talk about the the palate. This is the palatine bone here. All right. There's little holes on either side of it. And it's the greater palatine foramen. Any okay, greater palatine foramen. All right. I think we'll pause there, let you find some of those structures that we just talked about. And you can also be writing them in your lab manual, fill in the blanks. All right, so let's look at the frontal bone. Again, it's another view of the glabella here between the uh, eyebrows. Got your superciliary arch kind of going above and your superorbital margin below. Another view, superorbital 
And here's the foramen, that little hole above the eye. It's the frontal sinus. Okay, you got spaces. Okay, that's what you get when you have allergies, they can get clogged up. And the superorbital margin. Okay, if you look at the maxilla, here's some more structures. You have the infraorbital foramen under the eye, under the orbit. Okay. So essentially where like the it's sort of a, a raising up where the two sticks into the maxilla, call it alveolar margin. Okay, you got a little bumps here, we call that alveolar process. Okay, here's another view of the middle nasal concha and the inferior nasal concha, the bomer and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Okay, on the ethmoid bone, some structures you, you definitely need to know. Again, perpendicular plate, there's another structure call it the Christogali, okay? So you can also see the nasal concha here, but these two in particular, Christogali and perpendicular plate, extremely important structures to know. Okay, here's another view. So if you take the top of the skull off, here's a view of the cribriform plate. So the cribriform plate is on either side of the Christogali, okay? So the Christogali is kind of like a little little line. Either side of it, you have a cribriform plate. And you'll notice that the cribriform plate has little holes in it. And the little holes are olfactory foramina. So olfactory means what, anybody know? No. Smelling, no, right? So those are holes that are involved in your olfactory system, your sense of smell. So if I were to ask you, okay, what structure is this? You would tell me it's the cribriform plate. If I ask you what are those little holes, you would tell me the olfactory parameter. Okay, so it just depends on how I ask the question, okay? Because for the quiz, you're gonna have basically axial skeleton type stuff, okay? Next week, the axial skeleton, so skull, ribs, sternum, stuff like that, where you have the late, you'll have pictures, you'll have a word bank, but you know, you'll have to know what structure is the right one. Sometimes you'll be identifying a bone. Sometimes you'll be identifying a cell. Sometimes it'll be a structure. Yeah, another view of the frame and magnum. There's that hyoid bone. Again, that only bone that doesn't touch other bones. Okay, it's connected by connective tissue. It has two horns on either side, a greater horn and a lesser horn. All right, so let's view your external auditory meatus. Okay, the air on. Let's see. There's a styloid process. Yeah, it's, it's not really a great view because, and this one is, don't worry about this slide. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna fix that. That needs to be fixed. All right. Um, okay, sphenoid. You have greater wing here. Kind of big wing, if you think about it. it looks kind of like a bat and up here, you've got a lesser wing, smaller wing. Okay. These small holes here, they're like oval shaped holes, they're foramen oval. And here's a sphenoidal sinus as well, the cavity. Okay. 
All right, so you have these two processes on either side. This is medial, this is lateral. So it's the lateral pterygoid process and the medial pterygoid process. All right, again, mentioned this earlier, it's a condylar process here. This would be a head. This is a ramus, this area right here, we call it the ramus. This area is the mandibular notch. So this area down here is a ramus, but toward the tip, it's coronoid process. And here's your mental foramen again. The chin, call that mental protuberance because it's sticking out. Okay, again, this kind of area here where the teeth meet the bone, alveolar margin, and that kind of part where it sticks out is the alveolar process. Okay. I want to go back up to get a good view of the zygomatic bone. I think it got kind of obscured. Okay. So I want to make sure you're aware of the zygomatic bone here, central bone here, they connect and they form what we call zygomatic arch. So, because it's kind of an arch, right? Going around your face. So where they touch on the zygomatic arch, we, we say it's based on what it's touching. So this is the temporal process because it's touching the temporal bone of the zygomatic bone. This side, zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure you see that. This hole here, that's where your ear canal is, that's the external acoustic meatus. It's a view of your styloid process there. This big bump down here is your mastoid process. I wanna make sure you got that. So styloid process, mastoid process, external acoustic meatus. All right. So before we get into the ossicles, let's take a little break and you can review the structures that we just covered. All right, so in your ear canal, you've got three bones. You have the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Okay, this station here in the middle, you've got some ear model where you can look at those. Those are the three bones of the ear canal. Okay, if you're going from lateral to medial, it's MIS, malleus incus stapes. All right, again, we use some of the foramen or foramina. Again, it's foramen magnum. This one's called the jugular foramen. It's a carotid canal. Up here is foramen lacerum. And it's oval one in the sphenoid. That's your foramen oval. So yes, you would be expected to know the names of these different foramen. So again, jugular foramen, foramen magnum, Carotid canal, foramen lacerum, and foramen oval. So everybody turn their skull over real quick. See if you can locate those real quick. So you can use the foramen magnum to kind of orient yourself. So if you're looking at it, if you flip it over, go like that, so it's been away from the way it is in the picture. Like that. So there's the foramen magnum, the jugular foramen, the bone is the product canal, foramen lacerum, the 
anything like that. So if you think about it, it kind of forms a little line. So if you, so you can kind of go like that, or Z. So help you kind of remember the order. Here's another view I told you earlier. So you can see the inferior nuchal line, the superior nuchal line. Here's a view of those two. Okay, here's a view of those lateral medial pterygoid processes of the sphenoid. Here's this greater and lesser palatine foramen up here on the palatine bone. Okay, on the fetal skull. So fetal skull is different from the human skull in, in the sense that the bones aren't fused together like they are, you know, once you're born or as you've developed. So you have basically connective tissue between the different bones and we call those fontanelles. Okay, so if you see that on a quiz or a practical, know that you're looking at a fetal skull, right? Ours are based on the side, but also all the little spaces in the middle, fontanelles. Know that. And also up here I've got views. So we want to look at compact bones, punchy bones. So let's see, look at that. Okay, let's go on to the sternum. Sternum's got three parts. Looks like a tie, a necktie. So the kind of part where you tie, put all the wrap around the tie together is your manubrium. And the lengthy part of the necktie is your body. And this tip down here is your xiphoid process, okay? So if I ask you what bone is it, you say sternum. If I point to a specific part and say, which structure is this? Then you would point, tell me which of those three structures it is. Does that make sense? If it's not really making sense, tell me now. Okay, structures versus bones. Okay. Fortunately for this one, there's just three structures on it. Let's talk about the ribs. So in the ribs, these are, we have three different, you know, in the thoracic for the most part section, um, you have three sections, true, false, and floating. So your true ribs, ribs one through seven, called true, because they articulate directly with the sternum via costal cartilage. Now, the false ribs, ribs eight through 10, they articulate with the sternum, but they do that by essentially connecting to these other ribs, like particularly rib eight costal cartilage there. Ribs 10, so ribs 11 and 12 typically are referred to as floating ribs and they're called floating because they don't attach at all. They don't have costal cartilage connecting them to the sternum. Okay, so they're essentially floating. Okay, we definitely need to know which ones are true, which ones are false, which ones are floating. Okay, next class, I'll probably also, we'll, I'll give you a document where you can look at left versus right. And so you can get a sense for, is this a left rib or a right rib? Because on the practical, on the quiz, you wouldn't need to know that. But on the practical, you'll get two or three questions on the practical that will ask you 
is this a left version of the bone or a right version? And so, and there are little markers that you can use to tell yourself whether it's left or right. But I would tell you, don't stress about it. It's two or three questions, okay? So if you got everything else down, then maybe you spend time on that, but um, I wouldn't stress out about it. Okay, structures of the rib. Okay, definitely need to know this for both the quiz and the practical. You have the body of the rib. It's a little area where it curves. We call it costal groove. Major part of the curve, we call that the angle. Ending, you have the head, and connecting the head to the rest of the rib is the neck. The places where the rib touches, these are called articular facets, and they articulate. All right, so let's talk a little bit about vertebrae before we go. Main thing I want you to be able to tell the difference between cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae, okay? So I'm not gonna ask you, is this T5 or is this C6? But you should be able to characteristically be able to tell that it's cervical, thoracic, or lumbar. So to me, cervical has kind of a shape like this, like a pentagon or a house with a chimney in the middle. Thoracic looks more like that, kind of like a crown or gesture hat or something. Angle, I'd say this angles roughly 45 degrees, but you know, I don't know exactly here. Okay, let's go wider body here. This angle is closer to 90 degrees. Okay. Main thing is generally being able to tell the difference between the three sections. On the cervical, you'll also see atlas and axis. Okay, atlas is C1, first cervical vertebra, axis C2, second cervical vertebra. Okay, atlas. An oval, or kind of like a prime pan with two handles. Okay, axis. I don't know. Not. It's kind of almost like a triangle. So just kind of recognizing those characteristic shapes. Okay. Sections, again, cervical vertebra, big pieces that you need to know. Consider the body. So essentially you've got your, your foundation, which is your body. Okay, your walls, your pedicles, your roof, lamina, okay, your chimney, spinous process, and for cervical, you don't have it. Well, you do have it, they're, they're tiny, but yeah, like these little awnings, kind of like if you had a 
outdoor porch or something like that. It was a covered porch. It was covered. And I guess I'll put that there. The covered porch part is your transverse process. Okay. So that's your basic structure for a vertebra. If you're looking at it from this perspective, and this is like you're looking down on it, okay? Whereas this one over here, it's like you're looking at it from the side of the body, okay? And there's your spinous process, your transverse process, your body, okay? And then there's your atlas, prime pain with two handles, and your axis, it's more of your triangle shape, rounded off triangle. Here's your Thoracic vertebra, 12 of them. Again, here's your roof, your, your, your roof, your lamina, your chimney, your spinous process. You have big transverse processes. So you have big covered porch. So it's, and it's the angle here is about 45 degrees. Here's your vertebral foramen for the spinal cord. Here's your body. All right, another, you can see the view of the spinous process, transverse process, the body. And there's your lumbar vertebra again, about a 90 degree angle here. Okay, it's the biggest difference. You have kind of a squatty vertebral foramen, big body. There's your transverse process, spinous process, and your lamina. Here's your pedicle. Okay, it's just, you know, another general view of vertebra. Okay, we'll finish up here with the sacrum and the coccyx. Big thing you need to know on the sacrum, the upper portion, these, these corners, we call them ala. Down here, or it's points, we call that the apex. The middle, we just call that the body, okay? On the posterior view, you have where it kind of points up in the back, we call that sacral crest. Holes, again, sacral foramina. And then there's your coccyx, okay? So what I'd like for you to do now is to walk around the room, look at all the different microscopes and do your exit ticket kind of while you're doing that. And that is the axial skeleton.